Well, I am smoking cigarettes because I am beyond sick today. Although the sickness will end probably about 45 minutes to an hour after 11.45 tomorrow. Um, I could probably explain that in greater detail. 45 minutes to an hour after 11.45 tomorrow. <coughs> uh, something interesting. Um, for years and years, probably, I don't know, at least 100 years, maybe a little less, <coughs> at least within my lifetime and a little bit before, they found who these Philistines were. These sea peoples. Um, the, uh, <coughs> I think the common um, assumption is, is that they're from Sardinia, uh, Sicily, some type of Italic people. Italy, whatever. People have said that they were the Greeks getting kicked out of Italy, that they were uh, Italic peoples getting expelled from the from the uh, ex from the Etruscan expansion, then the Romans fighting against the Etruscans, then the Greeks getting uh, fighting the Romans that they picked up and left. Another theory is, is that they were the people of Thera before it exploded and turned into Mycenae, Mycenae, Earth. No, 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 Thera before it exploded and turned into Santorini. And they also say that this is what, called the, what caused the biblical plague. Okay, I'll concede the fact that I do think that the explosion of Thera accounts for, um, the events that we see in Exodus, uh, every single last one of them. I think Simki Yakubovich in his documentary on uh, on uh, decoding the Exodus does a pretty good sh job at showing that such a volcanic disaster will cause the ten plagues that's shown in uh, Exodus, if not all in order. Um, or we just see that some of these plagues actually come simultaneously or in groups of like four or five. But they're all there, I'm not missing one of them. Even the uh, release of lethal gas that just floats along the ground. And he showed where the firstborn slept in the lower part of the house and everybody else slept on top, showing that the firstborn would have been killed. Um, and also along with the animals. They've seen this in uh, Africa a bunch of times where uh, just underneath the water there was a <coughs> lethal gas waiting to come up and the first sign of its expulsion is the water turns blood red and then the next day this fog comes across the land only is about uh, two feet high suffocates everything, and then goes away. <coughs> so that people actually sitting up eating and not laying down would, uh, wouldn't even notice it. They would just watch it go by. And the same thing for the account of uh, this angel of death that would go through. So we're, we're actually looking at something historical interpreted through um, the eyes of people who saw things very mystically. Again, when you're reading something from history, you have to you have to look at how would how would somebody at this time view this? How would they interpret it? But you have to sh you have to be a detective basically. But there's one thing that I don't think it gets explained, and maybe I should back up at this point. There's the there's the groups. Uh, one of them is known as the Tejakers. <clears throat> These were thought to be the Philistines, but there's an even closer link with the Philistines with these people, um, because the Tejekers wore tassels on their clothes, just like we see the Israelites being commanded to wear tassels on the corner of their clothes. 
Um, I had a list of sea peoples right here, and uh, I don't know if I can spot it. Remember when I try to go back and find something? This is why I do no research. Um, the Peliset. The Peliset are believed to be um, the Philistines. Because you have the uh, the Pelestet set, the Tejeker, uh, uh, the Shekelesh, the Denye, and the Weshish. Um, these were seem to be a confederation of them, although there are about 20 different groups of sea peoples. A documentary called the um, the secrets of the, the 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 secrets of the Aegean apocalypse show that the Mycenaeans, the Minoans, the, and the Hittites all fall around the same time. And when I mean the same time, I mean boom within a few years of each other, if that. And that there's an actual tablet that's being that was being Fired to be sent off to this this prince's king, this prince's father, saying, "Look, we've seen a, we've seen about seven of these ships right off of our shore. If you see any more, send word." And the whole city was destroyed without even the thing being fired. And that archaeologist dig it up. And that Crete, we find 80 80 settlements on western Crete that had been abandoned. Same time they had been abandoned, <coughs> there had been these basically uh, Masada-like citadels built, built on the precipice of, a, of these high cliffs so that <coughs> um, people could only get up there uh, one at a time and they couldn't be carrying a weapon. Very, very, uh, very uh, precipitous climb. Now, I look at that further. I always thought the wandering in the wilderness, coming from Islamic background, 40, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, just meant a lot of time. But why are the Israelites sticking around in the wilderness, not going in and settling any land? Why are they, why are they kind of waiting in the wing, wings? Maybe... <laughs> these natural events showed them, hey, let's get out of here. And again, you have to remember, when I was always brought up, God didn't do miracles. Miracles weren't attributed to God. My dad always taught me miracles aren't attributed to God. But he gives people foreknowledge to help them. He point to the story of Joseph for this, that this, this horrible famine was going to happen anyways, but to prepare the people for it. That God is not somebody who comes down in metals in the uh, doesn't do miracles, but He grants people uh, glimpses into the future of how to take care of these things. So why wander around for forty years? Forty meaning many. I don't care if it's a hundred years or twenty years or many months. And the same time we see. And, and, and uh, scholars have already known that what they call the Philistines before Abraham and what they call the Philistines after Moses actually are two different people, and this could be demonstrated in archaeology, that it was a, a history being written looking back. Um, the Philistines were not a, an indigenous Canaanite people. They were a what's called a Greek people. And remember when you say Greek, that goes all the way from Sardinia to Sicily. Sicily was Syracuse at the time, so definitely was a Greek. Um, much of Italy and the Greeks. These people also get called as barbarians. But this Aegean Apocalypse shows them as the same people as the, uh, the Hittites and the Egyptians. Um, auxiliary barbarian troops that would wear no armor, just a headdress, carry a javelin, 
and they would clear the field for the uh, for those on chariots and the archers that were also you'd have two men on a chariot you'd have one with basically the sickle sword and then you'd have an archer but what what if you had an overwhelming presence of these uh, auxiliary troops that just had javelins you could easily overtake um, the chariots and uh, it seems that that's what happened and that no one fought with these grand chariot armies anymore that it was infantry and they switched from these uh, these sickle swords and archers and javelin throwers to basically moving armies of infantry and you might have uh, a cavalry with that but that's about it so you see a whole type of warfare ending not to mention you see three civilizations collapsing and Egypt being crippled and not coming back to its great glory pretty much ever again. So who were these to checkers? And uh, let me go through. Let me just lead you through just a, a group of them, which hit the Levant. Oh, we see the people coming after the Hittites, which are the Ekwash, the Terahat, the Luka, the Sheridan, uh, and the Shekelesh. These Philistines had occupied uh, Ashkelon, Eshted, Ekron, Gath, and Gath, Gaza. Anybody who reads their Bible knows this. Um, and uh, even, even archaeologists of our day, uh, I remember somebody asked, I remember an archaeologist asking him, oh, oh, right here, let me show you something. This is is just right off of uh, YouTube, right here. They're not YouTube, uh, Wikipedia. The campaign of 12, 12 years is attested by the Sudstel, Sudsteli. Found in the south side of the temple, it mentions the Tejekers, the Palesit, the Denye, and the Welshish and the uh, Shekelesh. This is what's seen in the Egyptian reliefs. And the Egyptians did drawings along with hieroglyphs. They did, they did relief scenes. And the funny thing about these people is that they, they are dressed exactly like these auxiliary warrior bands, these auxiliary troops that would clear the field after the, um, basically, hit the death blow to the chariot riders and the archers after they had fallen because the chariot riders and the archers wore armor. So the Palesit, the Tejekers, the Shekelesh, the, the Denye, and the Walshish, um, <coughs> whenever we see these in the relief of these sea peoples attacking Egypt, one thing we find is they're not wearing, they're not wearing body armor, they're carrying javelin, and the only thing they have is a headdress. Now go look back at these auxiliary troops that they were using. What the Aegean Apocalypse proposes is that these people were being used for this. And uh, it was a peace treaty signed. It lasted about 80 years. So where's the work for these people? They're out of work. And that after so long, they say, wait a minute. All of these great empires are reducing their, um, their, uh, their, uh, their armies. This is a great period of time where there's all this merchandise flowing. Nobody has to live under the idea of threat. It almost reminds me of, since I know my, my thing is the, uh, the late Roman period. The late Roman period is something near and dear to my heart. What do we see? We see there's auxiliary troops being used that kind of don't need to be used anymore. I mean, the Huns had already kind of 
gone away and just had 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 settled their own land and we don't need these goths and vandals and um, to be you know to be teaching them all the, all of our all of the Roman warfare and uh, then the Huns come back the Huns actually go east and uh, these mobbing seething people called the Goths who have been mistreated overflow Rome and then we see the Vandals and then there's no stopping anybody who's going to fight the Germanic people on the Rhine the Rhine freezes over the lighthouses go out um, after 10 after 410 and these uh, these people just cross the Rhine there's nobody keeping them at bay look at the way the uh, they, they believe that the Jekers had settled Thor and that the Peleset are the Phil Philistines. Now remember, these are just groups and names, basically these, these barbarians, but they're probably not all that different, one and the same. They're probably all very similar people uh, using the same technology. It's just how their, the Egyptians had grouped them. <coughs> and they're... they're uh their way of life is different. I remember archaeologists talking, and they said, "Well, so these Philistines were they eating? Uh, were they eating slop? Sorry, my Greek is bad, uh, or at least my modern Greek is atrocious. Were they eating slufaki, or were they eating um, were they eating uh, hummus?" And they said, "No, they were definitely eating slufaki." Uh, okay, gambler, you're gonna need me crap about that one. Were they drinking ouzo, <laughs> or were they drinking, uh, were they drinking wine? Uh, not wine. Let's 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 get something more Greek. Um, Stufaki. Uh, yeah, I, I can't. I, I have a hard time pronouncing Greek words. So, wait, I think I can narrow it down. Were they eating, um, you, well, you get the point. Were they, were they essentially Greek? And when I mean Greek, I mean Magna Graci. I mean going all the way from Sardinia to, uh, the Mediterranean, or were they a desert people? Well, would they like to ride on ships or camels? Um, and it turns out they definitely were what we would call Greek, even if they weren't from, you know, Athens or, or Sparta. And we see the Mycenaeans, the Minoans, and the uh, Hittites all get wiped out at the same time, and that Egypt gets crippled. And what his historians call a Dark Ages emerges. Out of the Dark Ages, we find... Uh, democracy grow in Athens because there's not any superpowers anymore we find um, many people attribute the Trojan War to this period <coughs> we also see that the kingdoms of Solomon and David could arise well how is that possible since you got a Canaanite kingdom right there with Canaanites, Hivites, Jebusites um, these people who had very similar culture very worshipped very similar gods um, and to the north, you had the Hittites, which would come down and rule a large part of that. And you had the Egyptians, which, of course, took about half of Canaan to use as a buffer zone. And even in the Bible, even after this had fallen, uh, the, the Egyptians still thought that this was part of their land. They'd still go way up into the... They'd stop around the Negev and fight. They, they didn't, th this was their doorstep. Now, these sea peoples weren't really pirates. These were not, people might have a misnomer that they would fight on the sea. No, they actually were useless until they hit the land. Once they hit the land, they could bring out their javelins, and they didn't need all that many people. They just needed maybe 
two, that the least 200, at the most 500, to just overrun. What's the only way to stop them? Well, we actually, surprisingly, we have something that's almost a frozen, uh, a frozen uh, photograph in time, which the Egyptians had left us, which is these people, the, the Egyptians pouring out of the delta, meeting these people in the sea, and just decimating them with uh, bows and arrows. These people couldn't be formed into rank and file and start throwing their javelins and, and basically rushing, you know, as fast as they could on foot. And uh, they could just be picked off and dispersed. And after this fight, the Egyptians erect um, this huge stone stella where they actually give a good depiction. They make pictures of these people, how they li how they looked, and one of them is uh, these uh, pelisets and tjekkers. They have uh, fancy headgear with these weird feathers on one of them, and uh, I believe the pelisets or tjekkers. They have no body armor, and what are they carrying? A javelin. Now, if you read the accounts in um, in uh, kings, what are the Philistines like? Do they have huge armor? I mean, they may have a few people on chariots, but it's not these whole war chariots things. And an easy place to take would be Palestine, since it's a since it's a hill country. I mean, if you read the battles of um, of Deborah and Jael and um, Jael's husband, I mean, it's, uh, it's all has to do with, you know, who has the higher ground and running and everything. So I think we found who the Pelesa to Checkers, Danyan and uh, uh, Weshish are. Oh yeah, and uh, Shekelesh. <clears throat> Surprisingly, we find these names are very, very close to some of the settlements that we find in uh, in Palestine since that was the majority uh, Egyptian and Hittite area and the Egyptian and Hittite repeal just pulled back. The Egyptians had to pull back almost all the way halfway into their kingdom and then set up a new capital right at the uh, delta. They couldn't use Thebes anymore because they needed to be ready for when these people attacked. One theory was is that this long era of peace, 60 era of peace, let these uh, these barbarian runners that would basically be you know kill the charioteers as they were knocked off their horses because the charioteers wore armor um, and they couldn't run fast. These people were now out of work, which I think is a very interesting hypothesis. Um, but obviously, I'm not going entirely by that because. Um, again, not only is it not only is it the late Roman period that I'm interested, in, and also the the the, uh, the beginning of the Roman Empire, which I'm extremely interested. Uh, the first part of history I got interested in was the rise of the Roman Republic um, after they defeated uh, Tarquinius Superbus, also known as Tarquin the Proud, and the uh, great queen uh, uh, Talia or Thalia of the Etruscans. I, 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 I love looking at these people. These people seem to be amazing to me. Um, and especially their, their, their society, how they, uh, how they construct. That's why I say Latin for Italian people, just for generic Italic people, but we have to remember there are Samnites there. There are, um, there are all these other groups of people, which I generally just I generalize into Latin since most uh, of the ancient ethnologists just group people into things like that, you know. Um, but if you look at uh, these names, now some Kiyakubovich, who um, I take with a grain, some of his stuff I think is absolutely brilliant, some of the other stuff I think, wow, that's a great stretch. He notices a people called the Danoi when the um, when the ancient Israelites are leaving that and even in even throughout Exodus, Joshua and Judges and even uh, 
in Kings, it talks about the Danites, who Homer records similar people known as the Danoi, who actually um, steal the Helen of Troy. That these Danoi, you know, they said, well, you know, who's going to fight and this and that when they're trying to figure out who's who in the judges period is going to fight. Well, these Danites are in their ships. We know these weren't a seafaring people, but they came from land, that they were in their ships. This is right before uh, this, this invasion of sea peoples and right before uh, these um, this, this dark ages that, that, that comes. Well, Homer describes them as Danoi. And right here we see Danyan. And what do we know about Dan? Dan was considered an apost apostasy. They were considered people who left, who were not, who basically gave up their their uh, their identity and being a people of God. And that they were bull worshippers, which was very common for pagan Mediterraneans. So did they say, well, well, we'll take our chances going by sea with these people. We can make riches. And what do we see um, with Gideon and Ehud and all these other people is that there's not huge power structures. These these are chaotic lands with all these different peoples in there. Who's, who's the emperor? Who's the king that rides over all? And this is an area that's just a little bit away from Egypt. It's just south from the Hittites, and we see Hittites are still around, but they're not the huge force that they were before. Um, they were kind of just the people who descended from the Hittites. Because if you know anything about the Hittites, these were people who would, when, when they actually had a huge empire, they would, uh, they would surround a city, kill everyone, and stack all their skulls outside. You could tell they ripped that off from the Assyrians. Very, very effective tool of um, of war, psychological warfare. Another thing they find out in Crete is that there's 80 settlements that are abandoned. And what happens to these 80 settlements? Do they go away permanently? No, these people start building. And some people say, oh, it was because of the earthquakes and tsunamis was through earthquakes and tsunamis. Why did they build these basically tiny citadel um, village towns on the extreme edge of rocks that could just be shorn off at, at, at a big earthquake? And that the only way to get to them is a weaving path where you have to cling to it with all four appendages. You couldn't be carrying a sword. You could only come up one by one it would only take about six people, six guys, just to be throwing stones down on top for these people to be dispersed. So you have these barbarian auxiliary troops, which don't get named individually, but just get get a name, a group name, and then a number of how many they were. And they're displayed in battle. Along, they're, they're these runners alongside the chariots. And they have a headdress to identify who they were or which group they were with, they wear no body armor, and they carry a javelin. About a hundred years later, these people show up wearing he wearing these uh, fancy headgear, no armor, and javelins. Now, after this period, after this period where they, the whole disruption in the chariots happen, what do we see? We see massive infantries because these these people find out we can defeat chariots very easily. If there's just enough of us with javelins, we can take out chariots and archers. The one thing they couldn't do is if they were if they were stuck together on boats, they were useless. So the Egyptians went out just past their uh, delta into the, into the open water, just took their archers and just decimated these people. And after this, the Egyptian reliefs went up, and the uh, Tejeker settled an area, uh, a city called Dor in Canaan. And this is recorded in uh, the Hebrew Bible. And that these uh, Pelesids show up the same time as uh, Joshua is coming in to Canaan. 
and the judges are coming into Canaan, and they're fighting this out. Because where's the superpower of Canaan at this time? You look in the archaeological record and you see uh, Chemosh, Hadad, you see a whole different spectrum of gods. Well, who are the gods that the, uh, the Canaanites bring in? Dagon. Yes, they use Baal. Um, but was Baal a Hebrew name? Because uh, Jezebel's grandson actually forms Carthage. And all of these gods seem to be r related to each other. <clears throat> Many, uh, I should do a video on the difference between the Greek gods and the Roman gods. But even these, these, these uh, Canaanite gods have counterparts that we could call Greece in, in Greece or in, in Rome. After all, Saturn is Kronos. Mat is either Hades or Pluto. Hades and Pluto are the same god. Kronos uh, uh, obviously being Saturn. Um, and uh, El being Kronos. Um, and it gets, uh, it's kind of strange that how do these, if you have these different peoples, which, how different really were they? They have the same pantheons. Could it be that we attribute a lot to Sardinia and the Fertile Crescent? But could it be these Sardinian Sea Peoples? Because whoever said Sardinia and the Iberian Peninsula, that we now call Spain, just were just nothing. They were just savages, even though apparently Hercules had traveled all the way to, um, to Spain, it being called the Pillars of Hercules. We saw these adventures with Sardinia. Syracuse is right there. We know Syracuse, which is now Sicily, was a thriving Greek colony. Pythagoras was from there. These people knew how to travel. So I'll go in. I'll, I'll go into the next time. But I think this Aegean apocalypse theory gives a great theory. But um, I think you need to couple it, or not couple it, gather it with multiple other views, and I think it becomes very obvious. Because one of the greatest questions was, where are the where are the Philistines coming from? Because very early on they realized the Philistines that the people get called Philistines at the time of Abraham really aren't the Philistines. These are people looking back and saying, oh well, these enemies, and they're calling them Philistines. And the Philistines weren't a Canaanite people. They were people that showed up around the same time as these these Israelites were coming into their territory. Because they weren't friendly with the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the um, the Hittites. These were another group of people. And if there's Hitt Hittites wandering around without a kingdom, what happened to the Hittite kingdom? So, um, I love history. I love archaeology. The more we know, the better grasp of our, our, um, our past we have. This is when people say, well, the Bible is totally myth. How could you possibly believe a thing that comes out of the Bible? When it matches up every other ancient ancient record, and it's not matching up exactly. It's finding commonality, common enemies. Nobody's going to make up an enemy that had just destroyed their land and is weakening them. Um, but I think that from what I thought, that the 40 days in the desert was just... Obviously, 40 days is only figure, figurative. 40 is figurative. It just means many. That that may have been the reason they were waiting for these... Uh, for both the sea peoples and the indigenous peoples to weaken themselves so that they could come up. Now, I'll add in a conspiracy theory. We knew the Israelites were, were living in Gershon, right? And that the Egyptians got worried about them, saying, well, if a foreign invasion comes, they might fight with them. Were the Israelites grouped in with the Sea Peoples? Take it easy, peace to you, may God save Serbia and Syria.